Next Level Sound is home to the modern music producer. To learn more about Next Level Sound's online music production courses, please visit nextlevelsound.com. Enjoy. So, so let's do this. I, I would like to start pie today. I don't think we'll get through every little piece of the pie. That's mixing and mastering humor. But I think we will we'll put a good dent in the pie. You're not supposed to put a dent in the pie. but And uh, I, again, I've been corresponding with Mir from Sound Radix. And he said, hey, Danny, this stuff is a little bit complicated. And there's a lot of people who don't understand it. So if you have questions, um, just call me on WhatsApp or whatever. I'll answer them. So I have questions <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I still, I will get some more answers uh, over the weekend. He's been very cool to get back to me and he loves our little school. So we're, we're in a good place, but we, we, I think we'll at least make a good start today. So, so, so we know auto align is for, is for aligning two signals two like signals really developed for two different recordings, um, two different mono recordings of the same sound source uh, from different mics or different distances and to align the phase so that you can preserve the distance, but minimize the comb filtering and tighten up the phase relationship. So that's really what it's for to two recordings of the same thing, different mics, different distances, and aligning those things. And for this, it works incredibly well. You can use it for two sort of similar things, uh, or two or more sort of similar things. And we saw that on uh, Tuesday, where we took the three different kick samples, and we used auto align to improve the uh, phase relationship. And we also know, just to backtrack, you know, what when when we have multiple elements that are not as phase correlated as they could be or should be, the result is uh, to have a sort of a weak or hollow sound in the low frequencies. And as we make our way up from the low frequencies to the mids and the high frequencies, there's a lot less phase correlation that we're looking for. Um, and in fact, is with stereo signals, as we get into the mid-range and the high frequencies, the, the less stereo correlation means that there is but more width. And we saw that on metric AB. When we look at the multiband phase correlation meter, we want to see most of the time, unless it's like an ambient section, the low frequencies to be correlated. And this is for the groove. If you're dancing, if it's an ambient breakdown in the middle of a track and there's no dancing and there's no grooving, but you're just spacing out, you could have a very uncorrelated sub or bass, and it sounds amazing actually. Um, but if we're grooving, we want our low frequencies to be mostly correlated, and uh, and then we actually want some difference distributed in the mids and the highs. Okay, so. So, so now we, we're looking at another tool. This, so we know what AutoAlign does, and we will take a test on it. And AutoAlign does what it does, and it does it really well. But what happens if you have a kick and a bass line, or drums and a bass line? Can you use AutoAlign to line up to correlate those two signals? No. I mean, you can. You can also drive a car with your feet, but I don't recommend it. Um, unless you're really good at well practiced at it. Um, uh, but you know, you, you probably can get some kind of result there, but since they're not really like elements and also the baseline is probably, unless it's a one note quantized baseline, um, is, is moving around on you a little bit. So, so, so there, then, so the sound Radix geniuses thought, let's make another tool that can track phase dynamically and can look at the phases of all the elements in a mix and correlate those phases um, 
to the best of its ability. So that if you have a kick or drums playing and you have a bass line playing, Pi is going to look at uh, your kick or your drums or whatever you tell it to look at and your bass, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to dynamically shift the phase between the elements to get a more phase-correlated signal. So that's a crazy idea, if you think about it. And at first, I thought, and I'll, I'll verify this with Nero, I think we're still getting there, but um, I thought it was shifting the phase of the whole signal, like of the whole baseline. But now as I get a little bit deeper into it, it appears to me, and I'll verify this, and we can confirm it next week, that it's actually splitting all of the sounds and the entire mix up into lots of little bands. And it's dynamically looking at all the bands and doing phase shifting within the bands. That's what I think it's doing. We'll see if near so uh, it stays live. You won't be rendering it exactly. You can't freeze this. Can you can you bounce or freeze or render auto align? Is that legal? Yes. Is it is it is it legal to uh, freeze pi? No. No. You can't freeze pi. I mean, in the real world, you could probably freeze a pi, but but you can't. Freeze audio pie. No, it has to stay live. So this is a very good question. Um, uh, so, so there's that. And let's get into it for a second. So we, for the most part, um, we, when we use auto align, we're going to put it as the first insert because if there's comb filtering phase cancellation and problems because of two like signals not being aligned, we want to fix that right away. Right, we don't want to EQ it, saturate it, throw it on the ATR. Um, if there's a phase problem, we want to fix that first. So pi is quite the opposite. Pi comes last. In fact, it comes so far last that is a that it's a post fader insert. Now I bet you one euro that nobody here, probably in their life, has ever used a post fader insert. You probably don't even know what it is. You probably, nobody has. No, this is the first time anyone ever did it. So, so let's just talk a little bit about signal routing. When, when my drums come in here, and I have my drums. My little drums. So, so when I go to, EQ them or put uh, a saturator on and I put them on an insert. And let's say I want to just put a Pro Q3. And I want to EQ these drums. Um, the, that is a pre fader or post fader insert. What I just did with this EQ. Is this is is Pro Q3 right now pre fader or post fader? It's pre, it's pre fader. Why? I so what this means is whatever the clip gain of this sound is going to go into this Pro Q3. I'm going to change the tone. I'm going to EQ it, and then when I go here to my fader, I'm still going to have fader control of that sound. Right? I'm still going to have a a. a a volume control after this insert. Everyone follow this? This is what you've been doing a bazillion times. Nothing new here. Okay. But when we insert an instance of Pi in, in, uh, in Cubase, if your insert is pre-fader, which is, is nice, we like that, we, it shows up as blue. But if you right-click here, you see this, this little option comes up if you right click or control click and it says set this as last pre-fader slot. If I click this, it turns orange. Everyone see that? So now this means that pi is post-fader. What does it mean that pi is post-fader? What does that mean, pi is post-fader? 
what happens if if an insert is post fader, like it is here, and I go to the fader and I move the fader up, what happens inside Pi? Adjusting the volume doesn't uh, affect its effect. Is that correct? If 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 it's pre, let's go back for a second. Um, if I have Pro Q3 still on, and I make I, I do a low cut and a high cut, I band pass it, I, I make it sound good, and then I move this fader up and down. Does that disturb my settings in Pro Q3? No, right? No. It, it, does it change? If I put a compressor on these drums and I get the most beautiful compression setting and I play with this fader, do I disturb that compressor? No. Okay. If I if I have Pi as a post fader insert and I go to this fader and I turn it up, what happens inside of Pi? More level. Ah, oh, no, not nothing. What happens inside of Pi? It's post fader. More level. Yeah. More level comes in. Everyone get that? What happens if I turn the fader down? Less level. Ah, interesting. So now it's post fader. So this becomes a drive for Pi. Now, if we open, if we take a look at Pi right here, um, and we see that there are groups so that we can put like elements together so that they can play nicely. And then the whole <clears throat> different groups can also learn how to play it nicely. Is there unlike auto align inside of pi is there an alpha and a beta or does everyone have to play nice no exactly there's no alpha or a beta inside auto line is there an alpha and a beta yes you send on on the the send track is this alpha and the beta tracks listen to that send in Pi, it works differently. Everybody gets thrown into the swimming pool and the bigger kids make a bigger splash and that splash moves the little kids around more. That's a beautiful analogy. That's pretty good for a Thursday. I just thought of that. But it is like that. It's a big swimming pool and the big kids make the big splash and they make the littler kids ride those waves i know that's good actually we should all be swimming not today in new york but if you had an indoor pool let's work on that um so so pi says to learn more about our online music production classes please visit nextlevelsound.com home to the modern music producer